Do you binge eat at night? If so, you are not alone. The What's Eating You podcast is a series of mental health topics that are designed to make you think, learn, educate, and validate. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Freestyle Friday. I am here for it. I hope you've had an amazing week. Congrats on making it to the end of the week. Today, I'm going to discuss a topic I received a lot of messages on, which was how to stop binge eating at night. I can relate to this. If you are new here, welcome to the What's Eating You podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Giorgio, and I'm here to talk about all things binge eating, ADHD, mental health, and more. I resonate with this because part of my eating disorder was nighttime binge eating. So let's talk about it. What is binge eating? It's eating a large amount of food in a short period of time and feeling a loss of control. It's usually accompanied with feelings of shame, embarrassment, secrecy, and just wanting to get out of this cycle. The reasons people binge eat may vary. I used to believe it was mainly because of restriction, because restriction leads to binge, but I've since discovered that people who don't restrict also binge eat. And we see this a lot in binge eating disorder, where there's no real compensatory behavior, there's no restriction or fasting or laxative use or purging, but people may also binge eat for reasons other than their body. When we typically think of binge eating, we think of people who may not like their body or who may be very restrictive in their diet. And when you restrict, 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 at some point you break a dietary rule such as I'm not going to eat carbs. And then when you eat carbs, your brain goes into black and white thinking mode. I've stuffed up. I might as well eat the whole pizza. Then you binge eat and you think that's it. I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start a diet. I'm going to eat fresh. That's usually the typical model. However, there are people who binge eat who don't necessarily restrict. And this is really comorbid with ADHD because the other reason is people don't eat enough during the day, not because they're trying to diet or lose weight or they're conscious about their body, but they may forget due to executive functioning difficulties. Another reason is people may continually eat to escape the painful feelings or emotions that may be going on in the background. It's a way of self-soothing. If I worry about my binge eating, then I don't have to worry about the trauma or the anxiety or the depression that I feel. Binge eating can sometimes turn into a problem that other people can manage versus a deeper problem they feel is unmanageable. So how do we actually do this? Let's get into it. I'm very excited because I'm bringing out a binge tracking tool. And if you've ever downloaded any of my guides, my book, or you're in any of my online spaces, you will have access to this. And it's absolutely free. So stay tuned. You'll get an email with the binge tracker. And this is the best place to start. So step one, to recognize and help yourself with binge eating episodes at dinner The first thing you need to do is build your binge awareness and you want to do this by tracking your binges. Now, I know this can be super uncomfortable and very confronting because when it comes to binge eating, it's secret. It's embarrassing. It's, I used to think it was gross. I used to think it was disgusting and I know it's not, it's a problem and this stigma happens for everyone but you've got to get real with yourself. And the only way to do it is you have to confront the beast. So this came from a viewer after they said, my binge episodes usually happen at night or after dinner, or even after I've gone to bed and during the night, which also affects my sleep. I'm on ADHD medication, but I find once it's worn off in the evening, this is where I struggle. So Number one is track your binges. And what does that mean? You want to track when you're binging, how long you're binging for, what you're eating. And yes, be very specific, right? The amounts, right? The types of food, right? The drinks. Record any emotions. What were you feeling? And also thoughts, thinking before, during, or after the binge episode. Could you identify any triggers? Was there anything that happened before? Did you have a fight with 
your partner? Were you feeling absolutely starving and you hadn't prepped any food and the Toblerone was the only thing you could see? What happened around this time? Okay, so one is track your binges. The second thing is you want to try to do a bit of a binge analysis. Okay, am I noticing any patterns? So you want to record your binges for maybe a week or as long as you've got maybe three or four in the log. Am I noticing any patterns? Oh, it's always at night. Okay, let's go with that. I'll use that for today's episode. Okay, why is it at night? What am I feeling at night? I'm feeling I want to relax. I'm feeling I want to de-stress. I'm feeling lonely. What is it at that time of night when you were binging? What is happening? Then I want you to reflect on your eating behavior during the day. Are you eating during the day? Are you eating enough? How often are you eating? Because a lot of people are binging at night because they don't eat enough in the day and they come home and they're starving. So just reflect on that because that's important to know. Are you eating properly throughout the day? Are you including binge foods, quote unquote, things you typically binge on in your day-to-day eating? This is a massive one because what people do is they stay clear of certain foods, chips, chocolates, things that are perceived bad in society only to binge on them in private. So publicly they may not eat them, but privately they will. So once you've done a bit of a a binge log, a binge analysis, and you're starting to see patterns, you can start to implement some techniques. So one, binge tracking. Two, binge analysis. Three, implement regular eating throughout the day if you are not already because this is super important. And four, when you notice what is triggering your binges, is it loneliness? Is it watching TV? Is it tiredness? Then you want to try to deal with those triggers directly. Okay. So if it's hunger, make sure you're eating properly. If it's an emotion, try to deal with that emotion directly Because the binge eating is not the problem. The binge eating is the symptom to the problem. For me, it was stress and exhaustion and I just wanted an escape. So whenever I felt stress and exhaustion, I would say, Steph, other than chocolate or eating right now, what else do you need? And I'd say, I really need a nap. Okay, Steph, go have a nap. And when you wake up, you can have an entire chocolate cake if that's what you need. So it's not about denying ourselves food because food's not bad. It's about seeing if we can meet that need in another way before we go to food. Is it loneliness? Can I meet that need of not feeling lonely without food first? So trying to engage in another technique or another strategy, and this is something I will take you through in something amazing that's coming up, so stay tuned. Because it's hard to do on your own. I can give you all the tips, I can do all the tricks, but you do need someone to hold you to account when you do this. Other examples might be if you're tired, go to bed. Tell yourself, you know what, I'll take a nap and then I'll binge in the morning. Sometimes lying to yourself is effective. And the final thing I'm going to say is turn your binges into something beneficial. And what I mean by that is, Stop hating on yourself every time you binge eat. Stop thinking, I'm a failure. Why am I doing this? It's disgusting. I suck. I can't do this anymore. And think, let's get curious. Actually get curious about your binging and about your eating behavior because curiosity leads to outcomes, whereas self-punishment, self-criticism, it doesn't get you anywhere because you're stuck in that emotion Whereas when you have a curious mind and you're like, oh, wow, this is super interesting. I want sugar when I'm tired. I'm going to learn this about myself. See your binges as something beneficial that you can learn from because you have to learn about your behavior before you can change it. A lot of people struggle with change because they haven't fully learned what the function of the behavior is. They're just trying to change the behavior but every behavior serves a function. 
I hope these tips have been super helpful. Remember to be kind to yourself and compassionate when you do this process because it is a journey and those who are kind and those who are cognitively flexible, I promise you will have a better outcome. So stay tuned for my binge tracker. It will be available very soon. You'll get an email about it if you've either downloaded my free guide or got a copy of my book. And speaking of my book, you can grab it with a discount code MINDFOOD20 and I'll send you a signed copy. I believe I have about 30 left in stock. So thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a review. You all message me on Instagram that you enjoyed an episode and it really made you change the way you think about things. And I am so grateful. So thank you for the messages. I really look forward to seeing them. And if you love this, leave a review, leave a rating, and I will see you in the next episode. Have an amazing weekend and know that you are amazing. Bye.